Ukrainians this morning observing a moment of silence for a war they were widely expected to lose, but instead are winning. It was 5 a.m. a year ago today when Russia invaded Ukraine in the biggest military campaign in Europe since World War II. At the time, President Putin said Ukraine, an independent nation since the breakup of the Soviet Union 30 years ago, shouldn't exist. This morning, President Zelensky said Ukrainians have proven invincible after a year of pain, sorrow, faith and unity. Millions of Ukrainians are still living as refugees across Europe. A year ago, they began to escape the country, fearing Russian troops would quickly take over. There's a lot of confusion about where these trains are departing from. We've seen people holding their babies up in the air. Throughout it all, the Ukrainian people have showed grit, determination and resolve. The Russians have now arrived at the gates of Kiev. This footbridge is one of the only ways people are able to escape. But the Ukrainian army, backed by American money and weapons, launched a stunning counteroffensive, driving Russian troops back and liberating occupied towns and cities. President Biden congratulated Ukrainians for their bravery after his surprise visit to Kyiv this week. But Vladimir Putin shows no signs of giving up. He's making nuclear threats again and launched a new offensive. Now China is entering the mix, calling for peace. Its foreign ministry overnight releasing a 12-point peace plan. It's mainly a statement of principles about the importance of respecting national sovereignty, avoiding Cold War mentalities, and the need for peace talks. Ukrainian officials say Putin can't be trusted, while the Kremlin continues to insist a sovereign, democratic Ukraine has no right to exist. China said that nuclear weapons should not be used, nor nuclear threats. And today, Savannah, the White House is rolling out more sanctions against Russia. All right, Richard, thank you. And joining us now from Washington, White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan. Hi, Jake. Good morning to you. Good morning, Savannah. As just mentioned, the White House is rolling out new sanctions this morning, as well as additional aid. But let's take a step back and go big picture. It's been one year, $113 billion that the U.S. has sent in military aid and otherwise. There is zero interest uh, apparent from either side of getting to the negotiation table. The president has said we're in it as long as it takes. So level with the American people. How long do you believe we will be involved in this war in Ukraine? Well, Savannah, I can't predict the future when it comes to the war in Ukraine, and no one can. And the reason for that is that the Ukrainians, with their bravery and the backing and support of the United States and our allies, have confounded everyone's expectations. One year ago today, we were all bracing for the fall of Kyiv. One year later, Kyiv stands, Ukraine stands, and America will continue to stand with the people of Ukraine. <laughs> and in the months ahead, we will continue to supply them with the necessary equipment to continue liberating the occupied portions so, of their country. But I can't tell the American people when the war will end. Of course, and, and no one could. Maybe I should have been more precise because you say in the months ahead, some people talk about years. The issue here is the stalemate where we're trying to walk this fine line. The president has said we don't want to escalate U.S. involvement to the point that we're literally in World War III. But critics, Republicans and Democrats say, you know, we're giving enough to Ukraine to not lose but not enough to win, to, to get that decisive blow against Russia that would end this conflict. Well, as you heard from the correspondent just before we began our interview, uh, Ukraine has actually succeeded in pushing the Russians back and reclaiming half the territory that Russia occupied a few months ago. The blue and, white and yellow flag now flies over areas that Russia was previously holding. So, in fact, American military aid has not just helped Ukraine defend its territory, it's helped them reclaim its territory as well, and we're going to stay on the course for them to continue to do that. You know, it's interesting because there seems in this year to be something of a pattern. The latest issue is fighter jets. Ukraine, Zelensky says, we want fighter jets there. But it, it, it seems that sometimes Ukraine asks for something, whether it's tanks or uh, rocket launchers or missiles, and then the U.S. waits a while and then says, OK. So I guess the question is, why not do sooner what you're going to eventually do and, 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 and try to get this uh, decisive blow to happen? Because Zelensky says speed is the issue. Time is not on their side. 
Actually, the United States has moved with unprecedented speed in uh, shipping weapons of all types and sizes to Ukraine. There has never been as fast and as comprehensive a supply of military assistance in a conflict in history from one country to another. But Savannah, I'm glad you asked that question because what we have done all along is tried to provide Ukraine what it needed for the phase of the war that it was in. The first phase, they needed javelins and stingers to fight tanks and helicopters. The second phase, they needed heavy artillery to push the Russians back. And now, Savannah, what they need are tanks and infantry fighting vehicles to mount a counteroffensive for that territory in the south and the east. Well, he's we have provided for all of that for each of them. Fair enough. But so, he's asking, I mean, presumably they know what they need e even more than the U.S. knows what they need. What happens is that our military experts sit down with their military experts and work out a plan for what we're going to supply them according to the objectives that they've set forth. And that's exactly what they're doing. And when it comes to fighter jets, for right now, what we are focused on is this counteroffensive where tanks and infantry fighting vehicles are the central issue. Uh, fighter jets are a question for another day. Yeah. Let's talk about China. Uh, Secretary Blinken gave a stern warning to China not to send lethal aid to Ukraine. The German newspaper Der Spiegel is reporting this morning that a Chinese company is in fact negotiating with Russia to supply 100 kamikaze strike drones, which could be delivered as soon as April. Is that true? And if China were to proceed with a sale like that, does that mean it is ignoring that warning? Well, I'm not going to speculate on hypotheticals or, or confirm that report. What I will say is that to date, we have not seen China supply lethal aid to Ukraine, and we are continuing to make the case for why that would be a terrible mistake for them. They would, in fact, become a willing participant in Russia's brutal destruction of cities and attacks on civilians. So I can't speculate about what China will do. I can only make the position of the United States and 141 other countries in the world clear that this war should end and Russia should end it by withdrawing from Ukraine. And finally, Putin this week suspended uh, it, the Russia's involvement in the only remaining nuclear treaty between our countries. He talked about refocusing Russia's nuclear triad, announced the deployment of nuclear capable ICBM, saying that it would make those who threaten Russia think twice. It's loose talk about nuclear weapons. The president has said he does not believe that Putin intends to use them, that he doesn't see the evidence there. What makes you so sure? And are you concerned about this escalation of talk? Well, first, any loose talk of nuclear weapons is dangerous and irresponsible. But Savannah, we can only focus on what we see. And we have seen no change in Russia's nuclear posture. And therefore, we have made no change in our own nuclear posture. We will remain vigilant. But for the moment, we have seen nothing to indicate of movement towards any deployment or use of nuclear weapons. White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan on a big day. It's nice to have your time and perspective. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.